not going to be a complete biology class on cell and life. We're just be hitting some points that are going to be useful um, later on in this course. And so our first big topic is to understand energy. Not a big topic. Okay, so we all know there's lots of different types of energy out there. We know that we have electrical energy when we put a battery into something. We know that we have magnets, magnetic energy. We know that there's heat from the sun um, and heat from a fire. And all of these different types of energy have to follow what's called the first law of thermodynamics. And that is also known as the law of conservation of energy. So what does this mean? It means energy is conserved. We cannot create energy. We cannot destroy energy. We can only change it from one form of energy into a different form of energy. So what does that mean? For instance, when you're driving a car, you're changing the chemical injury in the gasoline into a mechanical injury, the car is moving, but we're also getting heat injury out of that. I don't know if you ever put your, your hood, your hand on the hood of the car after you've driven it, it's hot. So there is a lot of heat energy released as well. Um, when we are growing plants, we are changing the solar energy into the chemical injury, energy found in the plants. So there's six little examples here. Pause it for a second, read them. You'll understand that, yeah, I knew this. I just had never thought about it fitting into this first law of dynamics rule. All right. So what is energy then? We're talking about all different kinds of energy. It energy just means it has the ability to do work. Work being the movement of an object after you give it a force. Okay? And this movement, this using energy is going to cause matter to break apart or to recombine. And so when we're talking about energy, all the different types of energy fall into this big two classifications, either kinetic energy or it's potential energy. And we and energy can go back and forth. It could be potential now and then become kinetic and then we change back to potential. Because remember, we can't destroy it. We're just changing it from one form to another form. So what's the difference between kinetic energy and potential energy? Well, kinetic energy is energy in motion, such as the car wheels rolling, such as the heat rising in a pot of water. Whereas a potential energy is a stored energy that can be converted later to emotion. So they show in the example of when you blow up a balloon and you tie it off. There is stored potential energy in that balloon because if you don't tie it off after you've blown it up and you let go, the balloon goes all over your house. Okay, so there is movement going on, and movement is work which has to do with energy. So how does this relate to what's going on in the body? Well, in the body, we know there's thermal energy because we know our body's temperature can go up and down. We know we can evaporate. Um, we do know that there's some chemical energy because we've all heard about lactic acidosis in our muscles. And we also know that we break down glucose and stuff like that. But I want to talk about four specific types of kinetic energy. And the first one is mechanical energy. Mechanical en energy, if you're going into kinesiology, physical therapy, this is a mainstay of your practice. This is movement due to an applied force. So this is body movement. Yes, skeletal muscle contraction moves your bones, but your heart contracts and moves blood throughout your body. Your airways and your lungs, your diaphragm, those muscles contract and relax and move air in and out of your lungs. So we have lots of different types of mechanical energy going on in our body, all of which are important for our physical therapy, for our sports people. But you also got to admit that heart contractions, blood flow, and breathing are also super important if you're going into PA school or nursing school. 
The second type of energy is an electrical energy. As you learn in anatomy, we have nerve impulses that travel down axons and they're related to movement of charged particles or sodium or potassium. This is all electrical energy occurring. A third type is radiant energy. And so the easiest example of this in the human body is to think of visible light where our eyes then can see the Roy G. Bibb colors. We can't see the um, ultraviolet colors, but we can definitely see with ultraviolet lights. And related to that are sound energy, where we have sound waves causing tympanic memory vibrations, causing oscillatory vibration, which then is called as a fluid wave displacement, which is eventually going to give us our hearing impulses. So these are all examples of kinetic energy because something is moving in all of them. But in order for that movement to happen, we had to change a potential energy into a kinetic energy. So let's talk about some heat energy, because I don't know about you, but I know if I've walked up a bunch of flights of stairs, not only have my muscles moved, and I have mechanical energy, but I have also generated heat. I can get hot and sweaty. Okay? So heat energy is a kinetic energy associated with movements, atoms, ions, molecules, skeletal muscles. And this is a waste product of all energy forms. We already talked about it in the car, but with muscle contractions, we also have it. And the reason why we call it a waste product, because this energy is not doing the work that we're wanting it to do. And basically, how do we measure the heat energy? We take the temperature of something, okay? Um, and we can transfer energy. We know when we iron our clothes, we can transfer the heat energy between the iron and the clothing, and that's what gets rid of the wrinkles. Okay. So another concept is entropy. So in order to understand entropy, you have to understand that this heat energy is not nice and neat little package. It's very chaotic. It's due to random motions of atoms of molecules. It's very disordered, okay? And so every time we are converting one type of energy to another type of energy, we're generating heat. So we are generating more disorder in the system. Okay? And this entropy is a measurement of this disorderment. And basically, the amount of entropy tells us the amount of energy that's unavailable to do the work that we were trying to do. So what does this mean? Chaos. In your home, we all know what chaos and disorderment looks like on your desk, on your table, in your kitchen. This is chaos. How do we fix this chaos with this order, this result of random movements and disorder? Because there is nothing purposeful going on here. How do we fix this? By doing work. Okay, so with the second law of thermodynamics, what this means is spontaneous process, entropy will increase. Okay, anytime we have some work going on, the amount of disorder is going to go up the entropy is going to go up. We know that heat always moves from something that's hot to something that's cold, unless we use something to reverse the direction of heat flow. Like for instance, if we have a heater releasing a bunch of heat, but then we have a fan blowing the air the other direction back towards the hot elements themselves. So we have to use energy to contradict the energy giving us the heat. So the second law of thermodynamics can also be explained by the, when we look like stuff rolls downhill. If we have a setup like this with water, we know the water can never go uphill. It's always gonna go from the higher level to the bottom level. Okay. So like I said, how do we get rid of this ornament? By doing work, okay? So what does that mean? We have to put energy back into the system. We have this chaos that was generated by changing this kind of energy to that kind of energy. We generated heat, we generated chaos. Now we need to put more work into it to restore order. We put a lot of energy into it. 
remember what I just said. Once we have restored order and we're doing order, then we're also releasing heat, which can bring us into a Then we're using a bunch of energy, which then releases heat and increases over and over. Yeah. All right. Let's switch to something totally different. And that is looking at our cellular membranes where we have concentration gradients. This is potential energy. We know that across a cell membrane, passive diffusion will allow a potential energy to draw, to be driven. Sorry, I said that wrong. Potential energy will allow the passive diffusion to occur. I think I said it back the first time. So we're going to go from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So what does that mean? If we look at a normal cell, we have lots of sodium normally extracellularly, and we have lots of potassium normally intracellular. So potassium is going to leave the cell and carry potential because there was potential energy. And so it's going to leave. When it's leaving, it's changing that potential energy into kinetic energy, and that's how it's moving. All the sodium that's here on the outside has all this stored potential energy. When it diffuses back across into the cell, that becomes kinetic energy. Um, and we know it requires energy because if you remember in an atom, we talked about the sodium, potassium, Oh, we were having to use energy into that. So these ions are carrying the energy with them because they are in areas of high concentration. So in concentration gradients, we have a lot of potential energy. Now, where is that potential energy stored? It's stored in the bonds that hold molecules together. It's real easy to see if we look at ATP. Okay, because ATP is a really high energy bond, and we have a lot of stored energy in these bonds here between the phosphates. And for instance, if we go from ATP and we break this one bond out here, we release the phosphate, we're going to release energy that can then be used somewhere else in the cell. Um, now, in addition to releasing energy, chemical ener reactions can absorb energy. Like for instance, if we're going from ADP to form ATP, we're going to have to take some type of energy from the cell in order to have that third phosphate to bind to become ATP. And that's it for this section. So I will see you when we come back and we do chemical reactions. Thank you for all your hard work and I'll see you shortly.